Will today's movie have people getting hacked to death? Of course it will. Why would you even ask me such a silly question? Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're covering Jose Ramon Larraza's slasher flick, Edge of the Axe. Released in 1988, Edge of the Axe emerged late in the slasher cycle. Larraza's film is a hodgepodge of influences, including Halloween, but it's also sort of like Evil Speak in that it works in a tech subplot. This results in a strange little movie that feels incredibly dated by today's standards, but will still appeal to slasher fans nostalgic for the subgenre's heyday. But enough about that. Is Edge of the Axe splattery? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Chuck Farley, Chris Morgan, and Vestin Pillsbrig. I'm sorry Vestin, I'm sure I butchered your name. If you want to sponsor some videos, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on this car wash. How sweet, another car wash movie. Hopefully George Carlin is in this one too. Working at the car wash, yeah. She's about to get the hot wax, but look out, she's not alone. Look, it's Michael Myers' less famous brother, Brad Myers. I usually just like them to Windex my windows, but this is cool, I guess. Anyway, she gets hacked up. Sure hope she sprung for the works package because that car is a mess. And just in case you're keeping score at home, we've got a nurse getting menaced by a masked maniac while in a station wagon. Why does this feel so familiar? Then it's time for the credits. Christ, did they program these on a Commodore 64? And I know none of these people, but I like that we needed to know that Fred Holiday is Frank McIntosh. Maybe they programmed these credits on an Apple IIc. Directed by Joseph Bronstein, which is Jose Ramon Larraz trying to convince you he's American. Or German. Or something other than a Spaniard. With the credits over, Ernest Hemingway is happy the movie finally decided to show up. Aw, oh, you brought me a gift? You shouldn't have. Wait, I ordered the blouse with the frilly sleeves. Inside, Budget Linus Tech Tip starts a new unboxing video. Sweet, my new stream setup is here. I'm gonna rock these noobs on Fortnite at 240p and 6 frames per second. Check out my Twitch channel. So, we've been to the car wash, toured the countryside on a motorcycle, and built a new PC. This movie is like the best Father's Day ever. From there, we jump over to another movie. Is this Ethel and Junior's place from Friday the 13th, A New Beginning? Cooking is interrupted when this pig squeals like a pig. She finds a blood trail and makes the always wise decision to investigate. Damn, even Charlotte couldn't save Wilbur this time. Too bad for Wilbur, the cops aren't interested in solving this crime. Go call somebody who gives a shit. Wow, your tax dollar's hard at work, ladies and gentlemen. The next morning, AliExpress Tom Cruise arrives to pick up Budget Luke Skywalker. Come on. Come on. Hey, Gerald, stop playing with yourself. Well, I guess I can head out for a while. Downloading these dirty pictures at 9600 bits per second is gonna take like 16 years. They head out and, um, wow, they're really sitting close together. This is a bench seat, no need to sit on his lap. Naturally, the conversation drifts to the ladies. Yeah, with that gorgeous blonde behind the bar, what, what was her name, was it Teresa? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about hot chicks while we sit right next to each other. That's what guys do, right? I'm getting a Top Gun vibe here, and I don't just mean because there's a budget Tom Cruise. Eventually, they wind up at a job site and exterminate their way right into this jump scare. The cops show up, and man, this cop is the laziest guy with a badge since Mitchell. Was a suicide, right? I don't know. Could be. Look, let's just call it a suicide and get on with our day. On the drive home, Maverick demonstrates that he's a loving and compassionate husband. That's all you have to do is wreck your wife's car. Imagine what she's gonna have to say. You know, well, it's always the same thing. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Meow. That's no way to talk about your beard, man. Then he peels out in the wagon like a total badass. Maverick! Jesus, she might really be a beard. This is starting to turn into an episode of The Forensic Files. So she bought you a pickup truck so you could chase after cockroaches and fumigate rats. One of these days, I'm gonna fumigate her. Then they stop at whatever this place is supposed to be so Maverick can hit on underage girls. Bodacious tatas. Did he really just say that? And don't worry about the age thing, she's 17, going on 35. After that, we wander right into the last Starfighter. Mind, I don't think you'd understand anyway. You're just a stupid girl. Then we go for a ride with the Bickersons. I should have known. Oh, don't start that shit again. What, I can't even talk to another woman without you getting upset? Maverick and Charlie clearly hit a rough patch after he got kicked out of the Navy. 
Back at the cabin, Gerald's lured in a young lady. Yet another clue, this is a movie and not real life. Hey, wanna help me turn my software into hardware? Rawr. Too bad for him, she's not into 3.5 inch floppies. You want a Coke? Yeah, thanks. Guessing things are gonna get awkward because they're not talking about the same kind of Coke. But it looks a lot less complicated than Icarus over there. I think I'd like this one better. <laughs> because I'm a girl and computers are hard. Then he offers her the gift every woman wants. His old PC. I've got an idea. I could install this one in your house. I <laughs> sure hope he's cleaned all the pervy ASCII art off of it. Well, now that you've got a PC, all that's left to do is get you a Twitch account and a hot tub. I'm sure glad we spent 10 minutes here doing a PC tutorial. This is the worst episode of Linus Tech Tips ever. It's still better than that Windows 11 press event, though. She's still pecking away at the keys. No, no, you just ran the Esteban program. Now we'll have demonic Clint Howard in here. What is this? Now, what, what, what did you ask? I don't think they really understand how computers work. It's a machine, not a magic eight ball. I asked it if you were gay. <laughs> but it's good to know I wasn't the only one who was wondering. Down at Moe's Tavern, it's business as usual. Who are you looking for? Mike Roch. Hey, has anyone seen my crotch? Oh hey, look, it's Surly Elizabeth Shoe from Slugs. She's still drinking. She heads out and you could say she's on the wrong side of the tracks. Man, it looks like she's running through a Call of Duty multiplayer map. Watch out for snipers. Eventually she runs into her date. He must work for the National Enquirer because this is a real hatchet job. The next morning, Officer Mitchell's on the scene. Load her up, boys. Damnedest thing I ever seen. She just chopped herself up with an axe. And Jesus Christ, is he hanging out with Robert E. Lee? What shape was that body in? Well, a lot of different shapes. I mean, she was in pieces. Seriously, the sheriff is putting forth an alternate theory of the crime. Look, maybe she was drunk or high on something, and at night in the dark, she tripped on the tracks and fell under that last car. Maybe it was a boating accident. Rogue propeller. Happens all the time. Look, I assure you, we'll investigate all the possibilities, but for now, in my report, it's going down as an accident. It is going down as an accident. Tragic that she tripped over the train tracks and basically landed on the axe repeatedly. <laughs> I hate to see it. And speaking of boating accidents, I kind of wish these guys would get into one. Maverick! He's really good with the ladies. Huh, you want to make out? Well, okay, but first, let me tell you about the guy chopping up women with an axe. Just want to set the mood. I found another body this morning. There's some maniac. He's running around chopping women up. Back over in our other movie, Officer Mitchell's actually going to do some police work. He starts by interrogating this guy who's busy polishing his wood. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, he's a carpenter. Then we get some jibber jabber. It wasn't an accident. We found blood stains all over the ticket booth at the railroad station. Wait, now it's not an accident? Is this guy playing us like Columbo? Do you kids even remember Columbo? Christ, I'm old. And over in yet another movie, this terrible soundstage thunderstorm is blown in. It's nice that the lights go out so our killer can make this fancy entrance. Oh, is this Extreme Home Makeover? I love this show. This new open floor plan is really gonna give you more living space. Too bad you'll be dead. While he's doing demo, she's hiding out here with the pigs. But you know the problem with that? The pigs always squeal. And our killer is back in action. And remember Linus Tech Tip's girlfriend from earlier? She's trying to get into the chat room, but she's getting shut down. Probably has Comcast internet. Meanwhile, in movie number four, Officer Mitchell has found the body. Damnedest thing I've ever seen, Roscoe. These pigs axed her to death. Well, better go back and do the paperwork. I don't think we can charge this pig, though. And we're on the move again. Linus and his lady friend are out on the town. I guess I played sick so many times that I really started to feel sick. So they sent me home and put me under medical supervision. Wow, this seems like a lot of sharing for a first date. I don't want to talk about my parents. Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru were the only mom and dad I ever knew. And yeah, nothing gets me more turned on than sharing medical histories. <laughs> Before things can get too hot and heavy, this priest shows up and reminds them they need to leave room for Jesus in there. And I guess we're just gonna follow this priest now. And why not? He can't be any duller than the rest of the characters in this movie, can he? He's busy overseeing choir practice. And what the hell is up with this weird shot, Jose Laraz? Are you trying to channel your inner Lucio Fulci or what? Clearly, he's not impressed with the performance. 
It stinks. Hey, remember Maverick and the girl out in the boat? Yeah, they're still in this movie. Unfortunately, he's done making out and is ready to leave, but it's a race and this lady is way ahead. Back at the cabin, Maverick and Linus are having a spat. What do you want me to do, kill her? Just talk it over the axe killer. I think he'd be happy to take care of it for you. It's not very funny. It's not, but it is a good idea. Just saying. And we're on the move again. I gotta say, I really admire Edge of the Axe's ability to just randomly ditch anyone who looks like a main character in favor of following random people on a tangent. This time around, we're following this lady as she searches for a leak. I will say, it was really nice of the killer to make her this bowl of blood soup, though. After finding the dead dog, she flees through the house. But if you thought she was just gonna do something dumb, guess again, because she's packing. But before she can start blasting, she's gonna give our killer the finger. Literally. <laughs> then he chops her into pieces. Dude really had an axe to grind. Back in our main movie, these two are instant messaging. I don't remember ICQ having such an ugly interface. And why is there some random man voice narrating? I have to talk to you tonight. This early version of Siri was really masculine. They eventually pull a notice reading and meet up. I sure hope this doesn't turn into Megan is missing. Then it's time for another installment of Bad Actor Showdown. Who's worse in this scene, the girl with one facial expression or Budget Luke Skywalker? Place your wagers now. One day we were playing in the yard and Charlie got onto the swing. Alright, so Charlie gets on the swing. Um, hi, I'm over here. You know, I can just see your cousin flying through the air. He fell off the swing and fractured his skull. Awkward. And if you're wondering why we've stopped for this episode of Storytime, it's because we need a new suspect. There was only one Nibs. And they released him from a mental hospital two years ago in Patterson. From there, we head back to the church. These guys are basically composing the soundtrack in real time. Bit on the nose, fellas. And hey, that's Professor John Waters from Pieces. Um, okay, I guess we're done with that. Then Officer Mitchell shows up with some bad news. She won't be coming this evening, or tomorrow. Mrs. Bixby's been killed. It was a terrible scene. Her dog murdered her with an axe and then killed himself. Tragic, really. With that out of the way, we head over here for more bad acting. He seems so mysterious. <laughs> yeah, he's mysterious, if mysterious were a synonym for creepy. And remember that story from like two minutes ago about the swing? Well, here you go. I should push it till you fall off this thing. All right, go ahead, try it. And with that disaster averted, they leave. Come on, let's go to my place and I can show you how I insert my stick of ram into your motherboard. But before they go, we get one more MacGuffin. Gerald, how did you get the scar? Could Linus be our killer? After that, it's off to the weirdest funeral ever. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Um, Jose Laraz? I think you're using the wrong lens. Then everyone tosses some dirt on the grave. You could say they're really piling on. Back in one of our other movies, this happens. Ah oh yeah, nothing is hotter than wet computing while some cheesy sax plays on the soundtrack. Oh hey, thanks for letting me borrow your dirty laundry. I will say it's a really bold choice on Jose Larraza's part to let the two worst actors in the movie carry this many scenes. Gerald, you haven't answered me. Is Dr. Philip Martin your father? God damn, she's awfully demanding. They're not even dating. And since the movie isn't really worried about moving the plot along, I guess we might as well go for a drive with Maverick's wife and creepy choir guy. She crashes the car just so she can get out and find this jump scare. Well, I guess this solves the enthralling mystery about who our killer is. It's the random guy who's barely been in the movie. Huzzah. Our killer pulls the classic Jason Voorhees, closing in on his running victim even though he's walking. And just as he's about to do the deed, we jump to another scene? Come on, Jose Larraz. I've sat through your 75 random meandering plot lines and the coma-inducing scenes between dollar store Luke Skywalker and the lead actress with the range of a pellet gun with a broken pump. You owe me that kill. And if you wondered if Maverick was still in this movie, here he is again. His character name is Richard Simmons, so it's probably safe to assume he's been off sweating to the oldies or something. The good news is that whole killing his wife thing has sorted itself out. She didn't sleep at the house last night. A suitcase and some of her things are missing. The bad news is he's now broke. I just came back from the bank and there's not a cent in our account. And there's even worse news though. What? They're open at a Pilates studio downtown? That'll put me out of business. And he leaves with this parting thought. 
You know, you're gonna get in trouble and you're gonna have microchips for brains. To be fair, this is an upgrade from the shit for brains he's using currently. And then he storms off in a jealous rage. <laughs> Why did he get in on the passenger side of the truck? Back at the church, the priest is on the phone with Jose Larraz. Hey, Jose, can we wrap this up already? I mean, for the love of God. The cops have found the dead woman and another body out in the woods. Sheriff says it's another accident, if you catch my drift. Oh shit, it's the random guy from the church. He's not our killer after all. What a twist. Somewhere, M. Night Shyamalan is nodding in approval. I tell you, this place stinks of death. That's not death. That's just me, Sheriff. I had Wendy's chili before coming out here. Lily, meanwhile, is logging in. Guess I'll check YouTube and see if that horror geek guy has posted anything new. This is interrupted when she hears a noise downstairs. And she's got an axe. Could she be our killer? <laughs> of course not, because the real killer is stalking her. Oh look, it's another Dario Argento cameo. Oh wait, it's just Luke Skywalker. He's got his Return of the Jedi outfit on. He's not here to kill her though, he just wants to watch some videos. Come on, watch this new Mr. Beast video with me. He's gonna give someone a million dollars if they can shove 400 Legos up their butt. And now he's basically showing her she's the killer. Admitted to the psychiatric ward at the age of eight. I can't tell you how she's taking it since she only has one facial expression. This could be accepting, aroused, or defiant. Lily's sure he's gaslighting her though, so she's like, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions to set things straight. While they're battling out, the cops show up and blast Dollar General Luke Skywalker. And the biker! Free! <laughs> Guess he didn't use the force. Also, it's safe to say the cop shot first. Officer Mitchell's like, it's okay, it was an accident. Did you see him throw himself right on that bullet? Damnedest thing I've ever seen. But here comes the swerve ending. No, not the fact that Lily was really the killer, that was obvious. The swerve is that she had a second facial expression all along. Wow, what a twist. I did not see that second facial expression coming. If this is your first Jose Larraz film, I'm sorry. This really isn't all that indicative of his work. In fact, he considers Edge of the Axe to be his worst film. And while Edge of the Axe isn't exactly a classic slasher offering, if this is your worst film, you're doing all right. This one doesn't break any new ground, but it is modestly entertaining with its ridiculousness and does deliver multiple axe murders. But can Edge of the Axe chop its way to a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Edge of the Axe delivers on the promise of the title. We've got multiple axe murders, one pig head, a severed head, and a shooting. There's enough bloody mayhem here to earn Jose Ramon Larraz a respectable three barf bag rating. This one's a modestly sick little flick. Looking for another slasher movie with an axe wielding maniac? Then be sure to check out my review of Madman. You'll find a link here on the screen during my outtakes. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. <laughs> Larraz's film is a hodgepodge of influences, including Halloween, but it all. Ah, God damn it. I'm gonna rock these noobs on Fortnite at. In case you're wondering, no, I don't play Fortnite. Too bad for Wilbur, the cops aren't interested in investigating this crime. Ooh, in, 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 in. Three in words in a row. Three in words in a row. But we'll still appeal to Slash. Oh, God damn it. He's really good with the ladies. Huh, you want to make out? Well, okay, but first let me tell you about the guy chopping up woman. Woman. Let me tell you about the guy chopping up woman. Seriously, the sheriff is putting forth an alternate. Boy, that's easy to say. Oh, we're so close to the end and so few screw ups. I feel like I'm letting you down, but I'm excited. This one doesn't break. But can Edge of the Axe chop its way to a five barf back rating? Back. Five barf back. The barf back. Blah. Come on, Jose Larraz. I've sat through your. Oh, I'm so indignant, I can't even read the lines. Someday I'm gonna do one of these without screwing it up. That day is not today.